Hi, I'm Ernie. And I'm Ben. And this is Budget Nerds. It was all in your mind. You are not alone. No, you are not. Happy 2023, Budget Nerds. Yeah. Happy 2023, Ben. Yeah, this is the first Budget Nerds of the new year. Although we are recording in the beginning of December, so, <laughs> so we're lying to you. But it is kind of weird. Yes, well, but we yeah, know. We, we have to like live in the future. Like you're talking to the future <laughs> right now. But yeah, what's it like in 2023? Are, have aliens come? It's the, fu- <laughs> <laughs> it's the future. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, since we're talking about 2023, real quick, any New Year's resolutions for you? Uh, mm, no, not really. I have actually. I feel like I've done a lot looking back on the year, I've done a lot to be healthier. Um, I've been working out more. I've been swimming. I've been eating better. So I want, just want to continue that. I think I, I don't have any particular practices I'm, I'm, I'm res- resolving to do, but okay. <laughs> but yeah, what about you? Any, any fancy resolutions for you this year? I don't think so. I'm not a huge uh, one for New Year's resolutions, New Year's goals. Last year, I had one. I I wanted to track my weight every single day and I'm getting Mm. to the end of that. I'm just like so sick of doing it. I'm like, that could be a lot. And you can kind of get like hyper focused on on one metric when you do that. Uh, Yeah, I know what you mean. I I should have done it for like three months or six months and then reevaluate. Say like, oh, I'm going to do this first. Yeah, not not a, it was a whole year. It's a whole year is a long time. Like who knows what it, a year is super long. I mean, what's, you think yeah, back you like, know, oh, like, like fast, but like what's August August Ernie gonna be like? Like you don't right. know in January. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I just kind of want to walk into the new year with a clean slate, and and we'll see what happens. Cool, cool. Well, today we are talking about something that I think we've talked about a lot in almost every episode of Budget Nerds, but we never had an entire. Uh, an entire episode about this. We're going to talk about simplifying, uh, simplifying your counts, simplifying your uh, categories, simplifying other aspects of your personal finance life. And this is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart. I love talking about accounts and and (laughs) simplifying and account structures and and other stuff too. Um, So I'm really excited about this one. I love talking about simplifying as well. At heart, I feel like I'm a minimalist. I am a minimalist, you know? And so when it comes to simplifying finances, yeah, I love diving into this too. And I I think simplification is at the heart of the YNAB method, Mm -hmm. right? Create this system, this simple system that brings you peace and clarity. That's all it's about at the end of the day. Yeah, reducing all the moving parts. So you can really focus on what's important, which is what you're telling your money to do, not on all the bookkeeping and all the, all the minutia of, of running your finances. So yeah, uh, that's a big part of the YNAB method for sure. And any thoughts on why folks overcomplicate finances? Oh man, I think a lot of people think that personal finance should be hard and so they make it hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think people almost subconsciously make it more difficult for themselves, maybe because they feel like they're doing something if they open lots of accounts or something like that. Um, it, it, like if you, if you feel like there's a problem, you feel like you should do something about it, right? And so people do, 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 and they don't really like think about, step back and think about strategy overall, you know? Yeah, thinking through this for myself, and you've already... Uh, touched on this, I overcomplicated things because it felt like I was doing something. So for me, I was overcomplicating the accounts because, you know, I just, Hey, open this account over here, open that account over there. Um, Sometimes it was because that's what other, you know, personal finance gurus were telling me to do. And like I said, Mm -hmm. it felt good. Like, Oh, I'm actually doing something right. Opening an account feels like a big deal, right? It does. It does. And then when you first move some money into that, your account into that new account, you're like, Hey, I just accomplished something. And then, and we'll get into more of this when we actually talk about various ways that you can simplify is 
I was chasing all these offers mm. that the banks were making. Hey, we'll give you tens of thousands of points or, you know, we'll give you X amount of dollars if you open a new account with us. And I was just like, oh, right. sweet, free points, free money. And then I step back and I'm like, oh, my goodness, I have all these accounts now in my life. What do I do with them? Yeah. And that's like, that's just somebody else defining your priorities for you instead of you doing it yourself. And yeah, it, it can add up pretty quick. So yeah, well, why don't we talk about accounts? I feel like there's a lot of energy there. What, what what's the, uh, what's the deal with, you know, uh, what, 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 like what's the ideal account structure for, for a, a wine napper, I think. You know, so I have the one checking and the one savings. Yeah. And I don't know if I can see a reason for having more than that. Yeah. I mean, there, there's reasons to have, there might be some really specific reasons. Like maybe if you're, um, if you have, uh, like a hybrid system with a partner where you have some, some separate uh, checking accounts and some joint checking accounts, things like that. But yeah, I feel like at the core of it, one checking, one savings is like, it's like the, it's like the platonic ideal, (laughs) you know what I mean? (laughs) And then life happens and you have other things too. But it's like, yeah, I feel like if you could just have just, in fact, I've, I've even gone further at different times of my life and just had one checking account for everything. And I didn't even have a savings account, but we can, we can dig into that. But I think the fewer accounts, the better is, is basically the idea because you don't have all these, this bookkeeping and you can focus more on other things. Yeah, especially on the savings side. Mm-hmm. When I came into YNAB, I had, I, I don't even remember, it was multiple savings accounts. I know Same. I had one for car repairs, gifts, a separate one for Christmas. I'm sure there was something in there for medical and health. And so then when I brought all those accounts into YNAB, YNAB didn't care where I was keeping my money. Right. All I cared about was the job of those dollars. And so what I ended up doing was just always having to match my account balance to my category balance. Uh, the matchy matchy so game is such it a just, thing. It, it <laughs> complicated things because it created so much more administrative work for me. You know, I would get paid and then I would make all these transfers into the accounts. And so then first thing I had to do was give jobs to those dollars in the separate categories and then match up the transfers on the account side, right? Uh, yeah, boy. But it, it, it took me probably two, maybe three years mm-hmm. of YNAB before I consolidated and got rid of all those extra savings accounts. Yeah, it took me... It, this was a long process for me too. I was like you. I came in with lots of different savings accounts. They were all for different things. And I played that matchy-matchy game. And all the time it would get off just for random reasons. Like, and it, sometimes it was, it was a huge bummer because I feel like I lost money because I would have less money in my, wait, let me think this through. I would have more money in my YNAB account. No opposite. I'd have less money in the YNAB category than was in the account. And so I was like, Oh, I don't have as much money for this other stuff as I think I do because the account was the, was the the source of truth for me, right? That's where the, I was really saving the money, right? Yeah. And if I could just, once I broke free of that and started saving money in categories and to the accounts, like the balance literally doesn't matter. Like the only thing that matters is avoiding an overdraft because I, you know, (laughs) because having enough money in like my regular checking account for that, that's literally the only re- only thing that I need to think about. Everything else is just like, it literally doesn't matter. So yeah, once I got to that place, it was just so much easier. And it took me a long time. Um, I started consolidating accounts, I think a little bit, but even then I would do this really close matching magic game where I would like kind of define these certain categories as savings categories. And I always made sure that matched a savings account. Yeah. And then, and then it, like months and months later and years later, I finally realized, actually, I don't even have to do that. I can just pick an amount. And, you know, sometimes it's not, it's helpful to be like, okay, this is generally what I'm quote unquote saving. And so I'm going to put that in a savings account. And, and it might be good to like, you know, just look at those available amounts, tally them up, move that money. But you don't have to do that 
very often, maybe like once a quarter or, or even less. I've done it less and less, <laughs> basically. So, and it's gotten easier for me too because I've gotten some accounts that have like a good rate of return on the checking account, things like that. So, uh, the the interest rate uh, part of it doesn't matter so much too. I still remember my mind being blown in YNAB when my accounts did not have to match anything in the budget. So here, here's my progression. I already said mm-hmm. I brought in multiple accounts and then I matched those accounts to the categories. Then what I started doing is consolidating a couple of accounts, Yeah, but I still had the categories. But it, what I was doing then is matching accounts to the group. To, no, 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 no. I consolidated all my accounts. Okay. My savings accounts. But then that account matched my savings group. Make sense? Right, right. Okay. And then what I did is I'm, I realized that I, I don't have to match that either. And so what I did is then I transferred money from savings to checking to give myself more of a buffer in checking. Mm-hmm. And I distributed those savings categories to, throughout the budget. So I just put them in other groups where they made the most sense. So some of them were true expenses, some of them were goals, whatever the case may be. And I remember thinking, I, I mean, my mind was blown. I was like, oh my goodness, it doesn't matter where I keep my money because it's all still protected in these these categories. And so I just I was like, wow, this is amazing. I have simplified everything on the account side. Now things are more simplified on the budget side. I don't have to worry about matching ever again. I just need to worry about an amount of money in my checking account to cash flow all the monthly expenses. That was all I was concerned about. Yeah, I I, I had a very similar progression. And I feel like the ultimate expression was I wrote a blog years ago um called do i even need a savings account or something like that maybe we can link to it in the youtube uh and it was basically asking the question like could i just have everything in checking in like one checking account and the only reason i could think of at the time to have to to separate things into a savings account was to get a good rate of return um a good interest rate which at the time it barely mattered because the interest rates were all teeny tiny anyway <laughs> now yeah for the first time in like 10 years at least in the u.s uh interest rates have gone up and it actually starting to matter a little bit <laughs> so so that's a, that's an element but i was like i don't really care about the interest rate like it ends up being like a cheeseburger at the end of the year you know how much money <laughs> save <laughs> yeah so, we've talked about that cheeseburger before <laughs> right yeah yeah <laughs> so so i just put uh, everything in into a checking account but what actually i actually found in that blog i was like i started looking for online checking accounts um, and I found one that had a, a pretty good rate of return on the checking account, not on the savings okay. account. And so I was like, sweet, best of both worlds. Now that I've got, now that I've solved this interest rate problem, I can just do that. So for a long time, I just had one checking account for everything. And I didn't worry about doing any matching cause there wasn't anything to match to. Right. Um, and then I started feeling a little uncomfortable with the amount of money that was in one checking account, because I'm saving for all these true expenses on a month ahead. I have a, I had a good amount of money there. And there's another really good argument for separating money, which is fraud protection. Like if somebody did yep. get into your account, they wouldn't be able to take everything. <laughs> right. Uh, and so I was like, okay. Uh, so when that bank uh, that I was banking with uh, in- introduced a savings account option, I, 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 I did get that. So I do have one checking account, one savings account. Um, but they both have similar rates of return. So I don't really care how much money is in either. It's really just to separate it for, to avoid, you know, a a whole lot of fraud. So that was a real, that was the ultimate expression for me was just going down to one checking account and not worrying about it at all. And now when I do decide how much money is in, in savings, it's really just a feeling like I don't even I don't even select categories and, and see how much isn't available. I just can't kind of be like, a uh, certain amount in checking, that feels good. And the rest in savings, I don't even care. Yep. <laughs> right. Same so. here. Yeah. So we'll, awesome. link to, we'll link to your savings article. And also, uh, Matthew, who's been on the Budget Nerd Show, uh, he also wrote an article about savings, I believe. So I'll search for that and I'll link it in the description as well. 
Yeah. Okay. Let now, I, before we move on, there, I, I want to ask you about credit cards, Aaron, because you've you've cons- you've consolidated your credit card usage quite a bit too, right? Okay, I have, and we'll get there. Could okay. we go off a little bit on sure, sure, savings sure, sure. accounts more? Because oh, you mentioned, please, I love talking about <laughs> savings accounts. Yeah, let's talk more about you, that. <laughs> you mentioned the high interest savings accounts, right? So interest uh-huh. rates are, are starting to increase a little bit, you know, that, that rate of return that banks are offering credit unions. And so I think there's going to be that temptation to start like putting more money in yeah, these high I'm savings feeling it int- too, you know. And I remember doing that, like when when Betterment opened their high interest savings account, I took a chunk of money that was in savings moved it over there and you know it wasn't a you know a super small amount or anything but it just even with a higher interest rate it just wasn't earning that much like you said it's that cheeseburger at the end of the year or maybe a couple burritos and so i right there interest rates are going up it's starting to be like like 10 cheeseburgers like you know it's it's starting to be quite a bit (laughs) people don't chase the interest rates it's not worth it i mean unless you're talking massive amounts of money right to really move that interest needle yeah it's not um it it, it, generally speaking it's not enough to um here's here's the deal uh having all these multiple savings accounts or or just spending all this time worrying about how much is in savings worth checking there's a cost to that there's a cost in energy and a cost in attention and time that might not be worth the money you're getting in interest right now by all means Put some money in a savings account if you if you want to if you can get a good rate of return on it, um, but don't focus on that. Like just just decide on an amount, put it in there, and maybe every once in a while update it. But don't like don't don't focus on it all the time. It's not a big deal. This is these are not the things that are going to move the needle for you financially. Yeah, and I realized you know that interest or that savings account of Betterment was not moving the needle for me. I was thinking about it too much. It was too. It was just another layer of administrative work. So I quickly took the money out. P- plus, I just really like having all my money at the credit union. You know, I can mm-hmm. have access to that right away. I can get it within seconds. Right, bank is just down the street from my house here. Uh, with Betterment, you know, it was taking two or three days. For, for them to wire that to my credit union. And so, mm. again, that's not a long time, but it just peace of mind knowing that, that my, all of my money was available at any time I wanted. I, I prefer that. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot there. Um, yeah, and I think that's kind of going to be the theme. Like when, when, you're, when, when you're trying to add complexity, there's a cost. Every time you add a little complexity, there's a cost in attention. So I think we'll harp on that a little more. But yeah, tell me about credit cards, Ernie. Okay. Oh, I'm just really getting sick of the, this credit card <laughs> game. So my wife and I have been churning points for a number of years. We turn those points into free hotels. It's been fantastic, but yeah. it's taken up a lot of my time and energy. And just honestly, I'm getting sick of it because there's always those, des- those decisions to make. Okay. I'm at this store or this type of store what credit card do I use? I remember this was the game we always played with Chase. So I had a Freedom, I had an Unlimited card, and then I had a Sapphire. So we were using the Sapphire for everything to get all of those bonus points. And then after that, it was the Freedom card had all of these different quarterly uh, categories, basically. And so, okay, it's March. So that's gas stations with the freedom card. So, okay, every time I go gas, make sure I have my freedom card or sifting through my wallet to find it, which card do I use here? And then at the grocery store, there was a different card. Eating out, there was a different card. For it, what? It's, you know, it's I, was so making, <laughs> I was making a couple hundred points a month, maybe a thousand or two, which does not translate into many free hotel nights right right? you need about eight thousand points to get a free night at a hotel yeah and And, you have people that churn these things like like it's their job right and they they, yes they get some cool stuff right but it's just like is it worth it for a regular person who's busy in other ways and, and has other priorities to to just focus on that so much and it's it's really limiting. I kind of went off on this, you know, the get off my lawn speech in Slack. So we were talking about <laughs> credit card rewards. Yeah. It limits me you know, because hmm. we're only staying at a certain type of hotel. Uh, you know, yeah. we always have to stay at that hotel and that hotel is not available in all cities. And so it really limits wow. where we can travel. That's a whole other level of complexity that you've added whenever you want to plan a vacation or something. I know. 
And it's just getting to the point where for me, it's too much. I'm kind of sick of it. I just don't know if I can convince Christy to stop. I know she really likes okay. those free hotel points. So you have points. different thresholds there. I mean, yeah, everybody's got a different threshold here. But I think the point is people talk about, oh, it's free money. It's free money. It's free money. And it's not. It's just not free. There is a cost in time and energy and flexibility, like you're saying. Uh, that is real. It's it's a real thing. Yeah. It's just because you, it's hard to put like a dollar amount on it doesn't mean it's not real. So think about um, what it's costing you in energy and time and, and focus and ask yourself, is it really worth what I'm getting out of it? It might be for some, for some people, but for others, maybe not. I mean, I got, you know, I, I'm busy. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I want things to be simple. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, and the other thing I think about too, and it's a morbid thought, but I'm going to die someday, right? I'm not going to live forever and I'm a planner. So I like making things, you know, simple, efficient. And so as I'm thinking about those later years or, you know, tragedy happens sooner than later, you know, God forbid, but I want to be able to pass off a system to Christy that is simple. You know, I don't mm. want her to have to close down multiple accounts or try to figure out all of these auto transfers that I have set up between, you know, various savings accounts. I just like, okay, here's my, here's our spending account. Here's maybe my one personal credit card. Simple done with, we can move on. Wow. That is a cost. I never thought about ever before Ernie. I mean, you're right. It is a little hard to think about, but you know, what, what kind of a mess are you leaving people that come behind you? You know, um, if you, if you kind of simplify it for yourself, it's, it's a loving act for them. So yeah, there's a lot there, a lot there. And we could talk about this all day. So simplify those accounts. Super easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's move on to categories. Keep it simple with the categories. Um, I'm not sure I'm, I, 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 sometimes I feel like I'm a little guilty of, of too complex on the categories. I don't know. It, it, this is a little more wishy-washy for me than accounts. Like accounts is super clear to me, but Sure. Where, as far as the complexity and categories gets a little a little harder for me to pin down. What do you think about it? I go both ways. So on the planning side of things, I often I often err on more categories than less. Because mm -hmm. I like being able to plan for specific things. And but yeah. then on the management of those categories, so transactions. When I go to Target, I I hate splitting transactions. I mean, that's a great feature, mm -hmm. but if I have to split a transaction, you know, 12 different ways, yeah, it's too toothpaste much. category, <laughs> toilet that's paper, the ultimate example, right? <laughs> coffee, like that's too much for me. So when, when I'm managing transactions, that's when I always get the bug. Okay. Let's simplify the category side of things and make this transaction side as easy as possible. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I feel like I, uh, I sometimes err on the side of too few categories, actually, because I, you know me, I like to combine a lot of categories. Like I have my fixed bills category, which is any bill that is monthly and never changes. Right. So that has like six or seven transactions in it every month, um, different bills. And sometimes I wonder if it actually adds complexity because it's harder to like, if I want to know, Oh, how much do I pay for this thing? I have to like check a note in the category, right? Like mm -hmm. I, it's a little harder to access the information about those bills. And sometimes I wonder if I'm like taking it for granted because I don't see it on a regular basis. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, but there's other examples too. Like, uh, I consolidate all of my, at one point I consolidated all of my monthly subscriptions and yearly subscriptions into one category. And I still have it that way, but I, I've separated. I have monthly subscriptions in one category and I have yearly subscriptions in another. And a lot of the time it, it's fine. Uh, so long as you have a good padding in the yearly subscriptions category, it works. Yeah. But uh, at one point I had this spreadsheet that was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> It was like such as I would like simulate like what I would like basically forecast what that category would be with all the random yearly subscriptions that would come out at different times of the year. And like, I'd be like, oh, well, if I if I only put this amount in there, then I'm going to that category is going to go negative in March 2024. So 
I need to pat it. Like I, it was just, it, and it, I, I know it got so complicated. I would end up being wrong anyway in my spreadsheet. Like it was just a mess. Well, you're so, a true budget nerd, right? You don't want to be short, but you also don't want to have any unnecessary funds in there, right? You want to yeah. maximize the job of all your money. So, but if I had like, <laughs> if I did like a category group with like separate categories for each one, that would, none of that would be a problem. Like it would just yes. be easy. Like I would, I would always know where I stood on each one. And right now I have it. Um, I'm actually a little nervous about it because when we um when we when when my wife lost her job in may i talked about that in the last episode uh we shut down a few subscriptions like i shut down amazon prime um because i was just scorched earth on a lot of stuff right (laughs) and so i stopped saving for those things that would be coming up but when i added it back i think i kind of just was hand wavy about it and I was like, we'll figure it out. So I'm like a little okay. worried that like, I'm going to end up overspending within that category. And I'm like, Ooh, what's going to happen? You know, but it's, but it's really not a big deal. Like I'll be able to handle it, but it's like, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. It, it would just, it'd probably be a lot simpler if I actually added more categories. <laughs> so, so this, okay. the keep it simple doesn't necessarily mean have as few categories as possible. Sometimes it means actually adding categories. So there's a lot there. Yep. Just like adding accounts. We talked about in a couple episodes ago, I added that cash account right. that simplified things because it reduced the number of visits I needed to make to the bank to deposit and withdraw cash. Yeah. I did the same thing. I got a little cash box in, in, in the house that has lots of different denominations of, of cash. And it's, it's so nice to have on hand, like, man, it's great. So, and I have that in, in YNAB too. So yeah, there, there's a there's a balance to be found here for sure. Some other things you could consider consolidating: other personal finance apps. Oh yeah. So for me, I remember consolidating. I got rid of personal capital. Nothing okay. against personal capital. I know a lot of folks use them to track investments, and that they're fantastic for that. But I just didn't need that level of detail. I didn't need to be able to access or want to be able to access those category balances at any point in time. I just wanted to look at those balances once a month. So Mm -hmm. I deleted personal capital um, and I just took all my investment accounts and loan accounts and put them in YNAB and then updated them at the end of every single month. You know, it's funny. People talk about combining different fintech tools with with YNAB a lot. I always feel like personal capital is one of those that totally fits well with YNAB because we're, there's not like a whole lot of overlap. Like personal capital doesn't really do budgeting as far as I know. If they do, it's probably just like spending limits. And um, YNAB doesn't, we, I mean, we have we have tracking accounts and stuff and, and net worth graphs, but we don't do like in-depth investment tracking. Like that's not, right. that's just not our, our focus, right? So yeah, so I, th- I feel like those two things could pair together. But you you found that you know you didn't need that either, and and I th- I think that's fine. I, I I had personal capital for a while. I think I still do. It's probably still like <laughs> importing transactions from stuff, but uh, I haven't looked at it in probably well over a year. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot there. But yeah, I do notice a lot of people will have like a, a you know a little side spreadsheet that they're doing. Like a lot of folks double the work, and I'm not sure why. I think maybe it's because they've been using some other. Uh, software or or some other spreadsheet and then they come into YNAB and they're not quite sure they can trust it yet, which I totally get. Right. They figured out a system that was working. So can mm-hmm. YNAB match that? I remember that's what I did. Um, well, not necessarily, but, but I guess close enough where when I started YNAB and well, targets weren't released right away, but once YNAB released those targets, I then set up that budget template Mm-hmm. And I made sure that my template, so the the total of all my targets matched to the penny, yeah, my income for the month. And so what I did to is in penny. a in a to the penny. I love it. So in a, in a spreadsheet, I had all of my categories and all of my targets and what that total was. Uh-huh. And then I would go into YNAB and update all of my targets accordingly. You know, I, I, I have to admit, I, I'm one of those people. I do have a, <laughs> well, still any, now, anytime I want to change my targets, I will sometimes create a spreadsheet and, and recreate it there just because so, just it's a little more nimble to do it. I, I hope one day we can make it a little simpler to like change all the targets all at once and kind of see it in, in YNAB. I think we're getting there, but we're not quite 
quite there yet. And so sometimes it's nicer to just plan in a spreadsheet and then transfer it to YNAB. But it is extra work. And I think the reason why I'm doing that is because like you, I, I do plan my targets to the penny for what my income needs to be. And you've broken free of that. And I've been intrigued by that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's like with savings accounts, it doesn't matter if they don't match. Right. Yeah. And I just like, can't quite get past that. But like, I, but the, the, it, it's been a frustration for me because there's so many variables like, um, uh, I, I don't know, like, like, like with, with difference uh, with changing dates and with, um, you know, whether this category was funded when you happen to look at it, you know? And so like, sometimes it'll be off um, and it doesn't quite match the income. And, I, and and so I've been confused. So it's not super working for me doing the separate spreadsheet thing. I think probably what would work maybe is trying not to optimize it perfectly, like have it pretty close, have, have that, that, that template be pretty close to my, my income every month but maybe not be so matchy matchy, which is what I'm doing right now. <laughs> well, and the other thing here too, is the reason I got away from that matching is because I gained more flexibility, right? We, you know, we had more money than we'd ever had before. And so things weren't as tight. So I, I don't worry about paying the bills. I have enough money in true expenses, whereas even something big happened, I feel like we can cover that. And so with that flexibility, I didn't need to match targets to income. And so right now mm. the template that I have in the budget is actually greater than the income that we, we bring right. in. And you don't necessarily fund everything every month. No, I, I don't. And so really it is, it's just every time we get paid, it's, well, what do we want this money to do? Not based on this template that we set up months or even years ago, but actually right now, what are the priorities and circumstances right now? Well, there's a lot of value in that because I feel like because that template is a little higher than your actual income, you do the the rule one work when you're actually assigning the money. Like I do the rule one work when I'm setting the targets and I also do it when I assign the money, but like I just use underfunded and click and go, you know? So, um, yeah, I kind of would like to do more rule one work every time I get paid, you know? So I mean, rule one is fun. It is. What is this money? It's wanted too to easy right now. Like it's too <laughs> fast. People talk about this all the time. Like, and th there is really something to this in, we've been talking about it internally. There, there really is something to this in software development and software design, um, where you need to like, it can't be too easy. <laughs> like it's like, it's like right now we have that underfunded button and I have that template so set that when I get paid, I just click underfunded and it just funds the money that I have. And then every time, because I have the template so set to my income, uh, it, it matches up, right? Uh, minus like a little bit. Because I, 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 one of our very first episodes, I talked about the margin, which is a little bit. So my, my, my template's a little bit less than my income, actually. Um, but yeah, there's... Um, there's a lot. What was I saying? Yeah, I was talking about the, the how it's too easy. Like it, it's almost it, it goes by too fast. Like literally just yesterday, I, I funded. Actually, no, it was this morning. I, we got paid, uh, and I funded a little bit of next month just by clicking underfunded, and it was done in two seconds. And it's just kind of yeah. like I kind of want to feel it and go through category category by category. But yeah, so it's too fast, and also it, it's it's so automated now that. I'm not doing the hard work of thinking about rule one every time, which is probably I'm obviously trying to work this out right now. Like it's <laughs> probably fine. Like I, cause I do, I am giving every dollar a job, but I'm not like thinking about it every single time, which is probably a good thing because you don't want to like, like I don't want to think about whether or not I'm going to fund my electric bill category. Like I'm going to do that. Right. But I might yeah. want to think about whether I fund, uh, you know, a certain savings goal or not, you know, so. yeah. I'm and sure. you might be missing out on the joy of, hey, I get to spend this money. You know, I still, and mm -hmm. that's why I don't use the auto assign a whole lot. I like dumping $75 into my fund money category every single month. I'm like, I now have 75 more dollars to spend however i want more chipotle maybe another <laughs> vikings game <laughs> i had to bring right. in chipotle you gotta you gotta bring it in yeah yeah you're right there's something about actually it's it's almost like a loving thing for yourself to like literally type the money the number in there yeah, yeah i don't know i don't know I, i'm gonna have to think about this because it has yeah th this is probably one of the biggest points of friction for me 
with my budgeting is making sure that template matches perfectly. Um, and it, I, I wonder if I'm spending a lot of energy on something that doesn't matter. So there's a lot there. So I think those are the big ones. Simplify accounts, categories, personal finance apps, spreadsheets, any other big ones you can think of? Um, I mean, there's lots of little things I think we could talk about, like automate your bills as much as you can. Now, this might not be something that you can do if you're closer to the edge, but if you've been budgeting for a little while and you're starting to to build things up and get ahead, dude, automate bills. Like just just put them on autopilot as much as you can. I mean, I talked about how my city's water thing still won't let me i did send a form i I thought you took care of that did i did i talk about this on budget nerds or did i just tell you you did and you you said you sent in that form and now everything's automated it's not yet okay so i sent in a form it hasn't i but i got a bill today that i had to manually pay i talked to a lady uh i'm i'm i was (laughs) i'm very annoyed the reason why i had to talk to the lady all right let me just rant for a little bit (laughs) I All right, still pull have, the chair, folks. I still have beef with my city's water. Okay, because like, not only do they make it hard, like if if somebody's asking you to like write a letter, like they're bullying you. <laughs> okay, like you shouldn't have to write a letter and mail a form in this day and age, right? So that that's one thing. Um, we'll just deal with the form. So the form is is in the thing. I, I asked the lady, "Do you have a record of it?" She's like, "Yes, we do." And she said, "It should be your next billing cycle. You should it should be automatic." And I'm like, "All right." I don't believe her, but we'll see because it's been a little while. But uh, I I got a late fee on my bill this time because I went to pay. The, so I got the bill in the mail. This is my process. I get the bill in the mail, which is just why am I getting a bill in the mail? Anyways, I got the <laughs> I got the paper bill like it's like it's 2001 or something in the mail. And I went online to pay it. And I, so I went online to pay it. And, and then like three days later it didn't come out of my account and i know this because i reconcile every day and i see that pending transaction that i've entered and it's like not in the bank and i'm like what's going on and i'm a weird person like most people probably wouldn't even notice that it didn't go through so i was like okay clearly it didn't go through i checked my email i didn't have a confirmation i'm like okay well i'll just go ahead and pay it again because it clearly just didn't happen so i paid it again same thing a few days goes by and it hasn't happened and i'm just like well, okay, maybe it's just slow. Like I should check the business day. Finally, I'm like, okay, well, let's let's check the account again. I check the account and there's a $25 fee on the account for non-payment. And I'm like, I paid this twice. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so I call the lady and she's like, oh yeah, we got a returned check from the bank because I didn't, because this is another beef I have. They don't. I guess it's a security measure. It's so dumb. It's it's not a security measure. Like in their in their online form, you can't copy and paste your account number into okay. this into the space, right? And you can't save it. So I have to manually type it in. And so I, I missed a zero because they're like this account number has like three zeros next to each other. And so if you, I only type two zeros, <sighs> and I got a return breath. check. I'm I'm just and like why didn't you tell me? <laughs> Like if you got a return check, just like send me an email. Be like, "Yo, we you, you need you. This didn't work." Instead, like they wait like a week, and then they're like, "Oh, you have a fee now." And I'm like, "Do you want to get paid? Like I'm gonna, I want to pay you." Anyway, I tried paying you twice. I tried paying. You. Anyways, so I'm very annoyed. So, <laughs> anyways, so that's that's my experience. So hopefully next month, I, I'm I'm a little worried about this form. Like, cause I have no way of knowing because it's a paper form. Because I had to send a paper form, which is weird to yep. the to the place so like what if i got the account number wrong on the paper form i don't know i probably got it right i checked it but you know who knows i can't copy and paste on the paper form either so i guess i could i could like print it out and like paste it on there. <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> anyways so next month hopefully i'll give you guys an update hopefully it is uh yeah it's all good and it's automatically withdrawn and i don't have to do anything but so once that stuff is all set up and running, hey, it's great. <laughs> Automated bills are fantastic. And in the YNAB side, you can then create that scheduled recurring transaction. That simplifies the account or the, the transaction management side of things, right? So, you know, I have all my bills automated. I think everyone mm-hmm. or pretty much everyone. 
and then scheduled transactions set up. So those are firing automatically. Then it's basically entering that frequent spending myself. Everything's backed up with file-based import and direct import. And I think I have a pretty simple transaction entry method. Thank you for bringing it back, Ernie, from from, from my angry rant. rant. I just wanted to talk to give you some time to cool down, you know? Regulate yourself. I'm so upset. <laughs> because, like, I don't miss bills. Like, come on. But, you know, apparently now I have. And it's, it's on my permanent record. And I'm going to have to go to the principal's office. <laughs> I was envisioning you when they told you that there was insufficient funds of, like, Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse I am me. a budget nerd. Do you want to see my budget? <laughs> there is not insufficient fund. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, it, uh, yeah. It, anyways, I'm a, I'm a rant again, so I'm gonna stop. But um, yeah, automate those bills, assuming that you can, and you won't have to deal with not typing in a zero on the online form because they won't let you copy and paste the count number. Anyways. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on. Some other odds and ends you could simplify retirement accounts. You know, mm, maybe you've one. had multiple employers and you got these 401s all over the place, consolidated they, that, them into either your current employer's plan or your, you know, maybe a, a different retirement account, whatever the case may be. That's yeah. a lot of work, right? Because a lot of times it involves actually getting on the, well, the, the phone and you making wait, some calls. The worse it is because like you don't want to like wait 10 years and, and have to call this HR department and be like, yeah, I worked there 10 years ago. Do you have a record? And they're like, what? Like just call, like as soon as you leave a job, move the move the retirement account. Um, but if you haven't, go ahead and do it now because it, it's I, I waited a long time for this, too. And it was just it was a nightmare, actually, because my old job like switch systems like they were with one company and then they switched to another company. So I had to like track down all this, all this stuff and it was just a mess. So like, go ahead and do it as soon as you can <laughs> to consolidate those retirement accounts. Yeah. So I have one 401, I have one Roth, but they're at different companies. And I've been thinking about, you know, bring my Roth over into the company that's managing the 401 for simplicity reasons. But I've been dreading doing it because I have to, you know, I tried doing it online and it didn't work. So I have to actually make a call. So that's actually a to-do list item for why not break. Yeah, it can be a pain, but just go ahead and do it. And you'll, you'll thank your future self <laughs> when you don't have to do it even more later. Uh, I think we can just kind of do like a, ra- like a round robin r- round off thing here. Uh, simplify tax documents as much as you can. I find it's really helpful to have like a system. Like a, I have a spreadsheet that has like every tax document that I'm expecting and so I can like check it off when it arrives. That nice. That brings me a lot of joy and a lot of peace because you know you, you never know, especially if you have a lot of accounts. This is another reason to simplify accounts, uh, especially in retirement accounts and all that stuff. You have fewer tax documents to deal with, and, and that's always good. Um, another oh, one for switch. my. Oh, my good. system for ta- ta- tax <laughs> documents is as they come in throughout the year, I scan them oh. and keep them in Evernote. So Who I go paperless you? right away. And Love that. then I, I get that, print that stuff off, give it to my accountant. And then I get a folder back and I just put that folder away. And then I just maintain, I think, seven, eight years worth of tax documents. And I shred anything older than that. I bet your accountant just loves you. (laughs) Seriously, I am so (laughs) proud because they tell me, all right, it's time to submit. And I'm like ready within minutes. I'm like, here we go. Here's everything Everything you need. need. And I know you won't have to contact me about any of it. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah, that's because that's that's how it should be. If you're if you're hiring somebody, it should just be like, here it is. Do the thing. And you don't have to talk, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right? But uh, that, but yeah, if they can't do anything if they don't have the documents, so that's that's perfect. Uh, switch to paperless delivery. Really wish I could do that for my water bill. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah, I I hate paper. Absolutely yeah. hate. I am probably ninety ninety five percent paperless, and if I can't avoid paperless delivery of something i'm again i'm i'm scanning that and saving it in evernote man i need to get on the scanning game ernie do you have like a really good scanner that's super fast or like what do you do i have a scanning app so it's called what? scannable of course and it, and it works with evernote in fact this is how I it think should maybe work. It, it even is their app but yeah something i get something in the mail 
okay, I'm going to scan this, open my uh, phone app, turns it into a PDF, uploads it to my Evernote account. I need to get on this journey, man, because I have so many random stuff, like papers. Like my method, because I get like a lot of medical bills because I have a lot of kids. So like my method is like I put the bill on this part part of my desk until I've paid it. But like I could, oh, I could scan it and put it into Todoist to remind me to pay it. Or, you know, or I could just pay it right then. But, you know, who, who wants to do that? But, <laughs> yeah, there's a, hmm, hmm. And then Scanning. once I scan it, yes. that paper goes in a box that I shred once a year. Gosh, that's the best. I am dialed in when it comes to paper when management. you scan it, you don't have to deal with the paper anymore. All right, I'm, yeah. I'm, or we're going to talk later. We'll have an episode about <laughs> your scanning protocol. Okay, there's a lot there. Oh, man. What else, Ernie? What else can we talk about? Uh, pay off debts, right? Yep. You're looking to simplify accounts, get rid of those debts, and then you don't have to think about that account anymore. So that might be motiva- motivation for some folks. Okay. Yeah. It's not just about the cash flow and all that. or It's it's about simplifying. That's good. And I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's Unless all we got. Unless you have anything off the top of your mind. No, I think, uh, I, I, think I should probably stop talking or I'm going to rant more about... Uh, <laughs> about my water bill but <laughs> we're gonna get back to the water company all right <laughs> anyways yeah so simplify your accounts simplify your categories um simplify your your personal finance practices in general if you're if you're using a lot of different systems just try to well wrap it all up into wine that is what we're saying and all the other things too just try to make things as simple and just recognize that there really is a cost even if you're getting something in return like in the case of like an interest rate or credit card points and stuff like that there is actually a cost associated with it and you need to weigh whether or not the cost and time and energy and attention is worth the reward that you're getting and sound off in the comments if there's any other thing you can simplify in the personal finance world let us know uh, budget nerds at you need a budget.com if you're listening to the podcast but we can't end the episode without sharing a couple of YNAB wins so let's head on into those All right, my YNAB win comes from Jay Lancelot. This was on the API tour video. I finally had a budget that I'm comfortable enough with to not have to do a fresh start in the middle of the year. Mm, nice. The data is amazing and has been great when it comes to things like figuring out a good average monthly spend rate using reports, which in turn is being used to build up a reasonable emergency fund. That's fantastic. Sounds like Jay Lancelot was making some fresh starts, maybe just, you know, wasn't keeping up with the budget or you know, figured out a better way of doing things, but has finally settled on an efficient system yeah. and now being able to benefit from that. So the clarity with the data, probably some peace of mind there. So that's awesome to hear. Congratulations. Love that. All right. My, mine comes from Kylie, also from the API episode. YNAB win. She says, I was feeling a bit down as over the last couple of months, we have gone backwards on our debt pay down. But I was looking at our progress over the last year and we are no longer scrambling to find money for the utilities and mortgage. We have several kinds of insurance, but last year we wouldn't have been able to pay the excess on just one. Now we can pay the excess on all of them on all of them at once. I love that. Yeah. So, you know, you haven't made as much progress on the debt pay down, but you've made other kinds of progress because you're saving for true expenses. Right. And so you don't have that stress and you, frankly, you don't have as much debt as you probably would have otherwise because Good point. whenever you can't pay for those true expenses, you gotta, you might have to turn to debt for it. So yeah, way to go, Kylie. I, I love that you, you know, you, you were feeling down about something, but you, you looked at the bigger picture and found some wins. And I think that's awesome. Yeah, congratulations. And I think right, you're going to get there with the, with the debt too, so, so no worries. Absolutely. All right, folks, you know the drill. If you have a YNAB win, share it with us. You got the comments section in the YouTube video. Otherwise, if you're listening to the podcast, Budget Nerds at youneedabudget.com. So that's all we have for today. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in two weeks. Happy budgeting. Happy budgeting. See you guys.